Welcome back again, guys. We are on the quest to find you and myself the best competition ammunition for your 22 LR. And this time we've got the Aguila ammunition, subsonic, 1,025 feet per second, a little bit faster than some of the other ones I'm shooting, but it does say subsonic, 40 grain this time. We'll see how it compares to the other ammunition. Apocalypse. All right, so I'm going to be using the Mantis X10 in a little bit here, which is already on the magazine for the recoil analysis, because that matters to me. And we'll check the velocity just to double check and see what it's like compared to the advertised velocity. All right, so first thing here, we'll do the recoil analysis and then we'll do the chronograph in a little bit. See if it registers. Sometimes those 22s don't register so good and that time it didn't. So let's see again. Hmm, that one. Didn't even cycle. For some reason, it's not registering. Let's go ahead and close it and restart it. All right, let's try it out. See what the recoil is like. Okay, there it registered, great. That was 0 0.01, wow. I'm just double checking that it's registering because sometimes it does it and then you're just wasting the ammunition. All right, finally got five shots, but I shot more than five rounds. Seems like a few of those don't register. 22 is really light recoiling ammunition. And usually I don't think people are doing much recoil analysis on it. So that's probably why maybe it's not that sensitive. We gotta try it again, five rounds. Why is it not registering my shots? Okay, I'm having problems with the Mantis X10. I hope it works now. Let's see what it looks like. Hmm. What is going on here? So this ammunition is giving me a lot of failures. I'm not even going to use this for competition now, but let's try to get the numbers and see what it's like. Aguila ammunition, subsonic not working out so well in the Ruger. See, again, another stovepipe. This gun is clean. I've barely shot it so far. Look at that, another stovepipe. What's going on here? Okay, that time it seemed to feed fine. But it went click. Then it even ejected. Tried to pull it out, didn't it? I mean, this thing was feeding other ammunition just fine. No ejection. But I think that I have enough data for the Mantis X10 recoil analysis. We'll go ahead and do the velocity checks now, okay? All right, sorry about the glare, guys. Hopefully you can still see the numbers. It shows zero, 60 degrees on temperature, 45 degrees humidity. Okay, advertised velocity is 1,025 feet per second. Let's see what we get out of a five inch barrel here from the Ruger Mark IV. 851. Like I mentioned, this ammunition is not doing so well in this gun. Then it eject. And I got more here, but we might as well just finish it off, see what velocities we get. Then it even load. And that's the last round. Toe pipe again. So overall guys, not bad on velocity. I guess 876 is lower than the advertised, probably because this stuff was tested out of a longer barrel, maybe a 16 inch barrel, maybe a Ruger 1022, something like that. And so you'd get more velocity, obviously. This stuff is around the high 800s, which I guess it wouldn't be so bad if it actually worked. The recoil was pretty light, didn't have too many issues there, but I think it's a little bit more than the CCI Quiet or the Federal Suppressor. But again, I went over those numbers with you guys and hope you guys like that data. So we'll start off with the Mantis X10 recoil analysis here. And so I already compiled the data in the bottom there, all of the averages for recovery time, muzzle rise, recoil width, and recoil angle. I'm surprised about the muzzle rise, it's really low. 1.94, even though the velocity was more than some other ammunition I've tested. But again, I was having troubles with the 
ammunition cycling through the gun and so maybe that kind of affected the results in some certain way but anyways you can see that the recoil width and the recoil angle are also pretty large and we'll see a comparison later on here with some other ammunition I used. Again this ammunition was shot out of a Ruger Mark IV 22 slash 45 light and there you have the specs there so you at least know what the barrel length is and the weight and the weight was actually the weight before I started adding the compensator the tandem cross grip and the o-ring so we'll talk about the velocity here now the velocity wasn't too bad the standard deviation is a little bit higher than some other ammunition I shot but on average I was getting 876 feet per second advertised 1025 you know that uh, give and take you, you probably have to assume that they test fired this ammunition out of a rifle instead of a competition pistol like the Ruger Mark IV so that's to be expected that you're going to get lower velocity there in any case this is just the data, the raw data here. So this light I'm going to be continuously updating. The more I shoot different types of ammunition for some tests, I guess I'm still missing the federal suppressor ammunition that I also like. So I still need to get out there and do a test video on that one. But so far I've tested the CCI 22 LR Quiet-22 semi-auto version and this Aguila that you saw in this video, the Subsonic 22 LR. As you can see, more velocity, way more velocity, over 100 feet per second more. And uh, if you take a look at the recoil comparisons on the left, graph there you can see that the guila is a lot more harsher on recoil with the recoil width and angle but the muzzle rise was a little bit less than the cci not too much difference and when i shot it the cci definitely felt better so there's also the feel or the preference there that you have to consider as well in the end I don't recommend this ammunition for the Ruger Mark IV semi-automatic pistol I was getting a ton of problems with the feeding and it can't be the gun. And I don't know what it is because all the other ammunition are mo besides the Norm Attack 22, which also doesn't feed so well in here, but I found another ammunition that doesn't go so well. It's the Aguila ammunition. And I think the other Aguila ammunition I have at home also didn't give me reliable feeding. So this is just gonna be target range ammunition to finish it up or use it on my rifle. And I guess with this ammunition, you're gonna be practicing a lot of malfunctions, which isn't a bad idea. But if you guys like this ammunition, don't let me tell you not to buy it. Just be aware of some of the issues that I'm having in the particular gun that I'm shooting. If you guys like this video, go ahead and click like and subscribe. I really appreciate all of the support from all of you guys and we'll see you guys in the next video.